Good morning, and welcome to our channel, where we dive deep into the world of construction contracts and the Fittick Yellow Book. I'm Jordan, your guide through the intricate world of engineering. And I'm Alex, bringing the contractor's perspective to these complex discussions. Together, we're here to unravel the mysteries of construction contracts and make these principles accessible to everyone. Today, we're embarking on a fascinating journey through one of the most crucial aspects of contract management, Clause 14.11, the Application for Final Payment Certificate. We'll be breaking down each part of this clause, using real-life scenarios and simple explanations to bring these concepts to life. And we're not just here to lecture, we're here to engage, learn, and grow together. So, we encourage you to ask questions, share your experiences, and be an active part of our community. So, grab your coffee, and let's dive into the world of Class 14.11, ensuring you're equipped with the knowledge to navigate these crucial aspects of your projects. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more insights and updates. Your support helps us continue delivering valuable content like this. Alex, our contractor, is approaching a significant milestone. Following the receipt of the performance certificate, he has a set period of 56 days to submit a draft of the final statement to Jordan, the engineer. This statement isn't just a formality, it encapsulates the value of all the work completed and any additional sums Alex believes are due. The role of Jordan, our engineer, is critical here. He meticulously reviews the draft. If there are areas he disagrees with or cannot verify, it's not the end of the road. Instead, it's an opportunity for clarification. Alex is required to provide additional information or make necessary changes based on Jordan's feedback. This collaborative process ensures that the final statement, aptly named the final statement, is accurate and mutually agreed upon. But what if Alex and Jordan hit a snag? If a dispute arises, Jordan issues an interim payment certificate for the parts of the draft final statement they agree on. This keeps the project moving while they work through their differences. If the dispute is settled either through the Dispute Adjudication Board's decision or an amicable settlement, Alex then finalizes and submits the final statement to the employer, marking a significant step towards the project's completion. In the world of construction, Clause 14.11 is more than just procedure, it's about collaboration, clarity, and moving forward even when challenges arise. Stay tuned as we continue to explore the nuances of the Fittick Yellow Book, making these complex clauses relatable and understandable. As we delve deeper into Clause 14.11, let's unpack its purpose and implications, shedding light on how it shapes the endgame of construction contracts. Firstly, the timeline. The clause carves out a 56-day window post-receipt of the performance certificate. Why is this significant? It underscores the urgency and discipline required in the contract's final stages. Alex knows the clock is ticking the moment the performance certificate is in his hands. Next, we see the emphasis on detailed financial reporting. Alex must meticulously document all work and additional sums claimed. This isn't just paperwork, it's about financial transparency and accountability, elements crucial in any construction project. The heart of Clause 14.11 lies in its promotion of collaborative revision. When Jordan raises concerns or questions about Alex's draft, it's not a deadlock but an invitation for dialogue. This process is pivotal in building mutual understanding and minimizing disputes. And when disputes do arise, the clause doesn't leave Alex and Jordan in the lurch. It directs them towards structured dispute resolution mechanisms under clauses 20.4 and 20.5. This ensures that even disagreements can find a path towards resolution. Let's not forget the primary aspects that make clause 14.11 so integral. 
From the stringent timeline to the detailed content of the draft final statement, and from the engineer's role in ensuring accuracy to the well-defined dispute resolution paths, every element plays a crucial role in steering the project to a successful financial closure. In the intricate dance of construction contracts, Clause 14.11 is more than a procedural step, it's a framework that ensures financial clarity, timely action, and cooperative problem-solving. As we continue our exploration of Clause 14.11, let's unravel its intricate interaction with other clauses, underscoring the cohesive structure of the Fiddick Yellow Book. First, let's examine the shared effect between Clause 14.11 and Clause 14.12, which pertains to discharge. The final statement prepared under Clause 14.11 isn't just an isolated document. It's a critical prerequisite for the discharge process in Clause 14.12, symbolizing the sequential financial closure steps and integrating the final statement with the discharge process. Next, we have Clause 14.13, which deals with the issue of the final payment certificate. Here, the final payment certificate is directly based on the final statement agreed upon in Clause 14.11. This creates a vital link, ensuring the final payment accurately reflects all agreed financial transactions. It's about basing the final payment certification on the agreed financials and linking these financials to the final certificate issuance. Clause 20.4, which focuses on obtaining the Dispute Adjudication Board's decision, plays a pivotal role too. In the event of disputes arising from the final statement under Clause 14.11, this clause steps in, offering a mechanism for resolution. It ensures that the final payment process isn't derailed by disagreements, integrating dispute mechanisms into the financial settlements. And let's not forget Clause 4.2, related to performance security. The trigger for the 56-day period in Clause 14.11 is intricately linked to the fulfillment of obligations under Clause 4.2. This includes the return of performance security, thereby connecting performance security with the final financial reporting and triggering the final statement submission post-security fulfillment. Overall, Clause 14.11's requirement for a detailed final statement profoundly impacts contract administration. It offers a structured approach to finalizing all financial claims, facilitating a clear and dispute-free closure. This clause isn't just a step in the process, it's a cornerstone in structuring financial closure and ensuring detailed financial reporting for contract completion. As we journey through the Fiddick Yellow Book, it's clear that each clause is a thread in a larger tapestry, all working together to create a cohesive and comprehensive contract management framework. Stay with us as we continue to decode these clauses, making them more approachable and relevant to your projects. As Alex navigates the complexities of Clause 14.11, let's highlight the key points to keep in mind for a seamless application for final payment certificate process. Timely submission is paramount. Alex is acutely aware that the clock starts ticking once he receives the performance certificate. He is precisely 56 days to submit the draft final statement, a deadline he cannot afford to miss. Detailed documentation is the next critical step. Every piece of work done under the contract, along with any additional sums claimed, must be meticulously detailed. Alex knows the importance of accuracy and completeness in this documentation. Format approval is often overlooked, but equally crucial. Alex ensures that the statement's format aligns with what Jordan, the engineer, has approved. This foresight prevents potential delays in the review process. Alex diligently prepares six copies of the draft final statement. This is not mere duplication, it's about ensuring sufficient documentation for thorough review and record keeping. Being responsive to feedback is vital. Alex is ready to provide additional information or make necessary revisions based on Jordan's insights. This collaboration is key to reaching an agreement on the final statement. Agreement on the final statement is the goal. Alex and Jordan work towards a consensus, understanding that this harmony is essential for a smooth final payment process. Handling disputes effectively is a part of the journey. Alex is prepared to engage in the dispute resolution mechanisms laid out in subclauses 20.4 or 20.5, ensuring that unresolved issues don't indefinitely stall the final payment. Upon resolving disputes and reaching an agreement, Alex submits the final statement. This step is pivotal for the issuance of the final payment certificate, marking a significant milestone in the project's financial closure. 
In cases of unresolved disputes, Alex is aware that Jordan may issue an interim payment certificate for the agreed parts of the draft final statement. This measure keeps the financial process moving forward, even amidst disagreements. Lastly, record-keeping is indispensable. Alex maintains thorough records of all communications, submissions, and revisions. This meticulous documentation is vital for any future references or resolution of disputes. As we reach the culmination of our journey through Clause 14.11, let's walk through the detailed explanation of the revised flowchart, encapsulating the essence of this crucial clause. The journey begins with the receipt of the performance certificate, the starting gun for the final payment process. Next, Alex prepares the draft final statement, ensuring it's detailed and comprehensive. Alex then submits this draft to Jordan, our diligent engineer, who embarks on a thorough review. Now, we reach a critical juncture. If Jordan agrees with the draft, they move towards finalizing the statement. But, if he disagrees or requests additional information, it triggers a revision phase. Here, Alex provides the necessary information or revises the draft based on Jordan's feedback. With the revised draft resubmitted, Alex and Jordan collaborate to agree on the final statement. If there's no dispute, the agreed final statement is submitted. However, if a dispute arises, they enter the dispute resolution process. Once they've navigated these waters and reached an agreement, or resolved any disputes, the final statement is submitted. Following this, under Clause 14.13, Jordan issues the final payment certificate, based on the agreed statement. And with that, we reach the end of the process, the financial closure of the contract. This comprehensive flowchart isn't just a series of steps, it's a roadmap guiding Alex, Jordan, and their teams towards a successful and dispute-free conclusion of their financial obligations. As we close this chapter on Clause 14.11, remember, it's more than just a clause in a contract, it's a blueprint for clarity, collaboration, and successful project completion. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through the FIDIC Yellow Book. Stay tuned for more insights and guidance on navigating the complexities of construction contracts. As we wrap up this detailed exploration of Clause 14.11, we want to take a moment to thank you, our viewers, for your invaluable support. Your engagement and curiosity are what drive us to delve deeper into topics like these, unraveling the complexities of the FIDIC Yellow Book. But we're not just here to share knowledge, we're here to grow a community. A community passionate about learning, understanding, and applying these principles in the real world. And you play a crucial role in this mission. By subscribing to our channel and liking our videos, you're not just showing support, you're fueling our ability to bring more educational content like this to you. So, we ask you inquisitively, if you found value in our content, could you take a moment to subscribe and like our videos? Your support is the key to unlocking more comprehensive guides and insights. Together, we can continue this journey of learning and growth. Your engagement helps us reach more like-minded individuals, expanding our community of professionals and enthusiasts. Thank you for being part of our journey. Remember, every like, every subscription, and every comment helps us create and share more content that matters to you. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.